Hey kids, it's me again. In this video, we're going to have the third measure of interest, which is the nominal rate of interest. Okay, let's start. Okay, so for the nominal rate of interest, we're going to use this notation. Okay, so what do you mean by a nominal rate of interest here? So it is an interest which is calculated or compounded or convertible or payable m times in a given period. Okay, to better understand this, you may think this a uh, given period as um, a year. Okay, isang taon. And then this nominal interest rate, okay, it is the interest rate calculated, um, it can be monthly. Okay, semi-annually, okay? So, kunyari monthly, so 12 times a year. Kapag semi-annually, two times a year. Kapag quarterly, four times a year. Okay? So, ganun yung nominal interest rate. Alright? And this is our notation. This one is read as I upper M, where M is a positive integer greater than 1. Okay? So this is the notation for the nominal interest rate. And then, to find the effective rate of interest for an mth of a period, you have to divide this notation by m. Okay? Like this. Okay? So you have i upper m over m. So that will be your effective rate of interest for an mth of a period. Let me give you an example. So we have here I upper 3. Okay? So this is the nominal rate of interest payable how many times a year? Okay? 3 times a year. Kung ano yung nandito. Ayan. Okay? So it is payable, convertible, compounded, Three times a year. Okay? Or, pwede rin siyang nominal rate of interest payable every how many months? Okay? Kung payable siya three times a year, okay, payable siya every four months. Right? Four, eight, twelve. So, four months dapat dito. Alright? And, to get the effective rate of interest for every four-month period, we need to divide I upper 3 by 3. Okay? Now, I want you to recall the accumulation function. The byte looks like this. Yeah? A of T equals 1 plus I raised to T. Right? Where I, what is I? This is the effective rate of interest per period. Okay? So, saan ba natin ginagamit ang accumulation function? Yes. Okay? In getting the accumulated value. Or, we use the accumulation function to carry this amount forward. Right? So, this process is accumulating. Okay? We're going to use this concept later. Okay? Okay, let's go back to the nominal rate of interest. Okay, let's have this time diagram. This is only one year. For example, sige, one period or one year. Okay? At nakita nyo, hinati ko yung one year or one period into three. Okay? So we get the accumulated value of one unit. Okay? So, Let's use the nominal rate of interest payable three times a year. So that's our I upper three. Okay? Oh, gamitin natin. So at T equals one, the accumulated value of this one unit here at time zero is equal to, okay, so isa-isahin natin, no? Okay, so, so start tayo dito sa time zero. So let's say we're going to carry this here. Okay? Dito muna. Okay? So, that's one period. Ito, kunyari, you can consider this as one period. 
what is the effective rate for this period? Okay, diba? It's I upper 3 over 3. So that's why to be able to carry this one unit here, you multiply 1 by 1 plus I upper 3 over 3. Like this. Okay, so nandito na tayo. Now, we need to carry it again here. Okay? So isang period na naman ito. So we can multiply this one by 1 plus the effective rate of interest for this given period. And that is I upper 3 over 3. So that's why we have this. Okay? So nandito na tayo sa point na to. Okay? So, to finally carry this amount to time 1, okay, we multiply it again by 1 plus the effective rate of interest for this period, okay, which is I upper 3 over 3 then, okay? So, that's why we have this, okay? Simplifying, you're going to have this one, okay? Or, if you want to recall our accumulation function, Diba? A of T is equal to 1 plus I raised to T. Your I there is the effective rate of interest per period. Diba? The effective rate of interest here is I upper 3 over 3. So that's why we have this. Okay? Ito yung mag-replace dun sa I natin kanina, sa accumulation function. And then, you count how many periods yung dadaanan niya bago siya makarating dito. Diba? 3. Kita nyo? So, that's why we have 3 here. Okay? So, application lang ito ng ating accumulation function. Okay? Now, let's say, instead of having I upper 3, we're given I, the effective rate of interest for this one big period. Okay? So, you may want to think that as the annual effective rate of interest. Okay? Your I. Okay? So, how are you going to get the accumulated value of one unit? It is simply what? You multiply 1 by, how are you going to carry it to time 1? Using I as the annual effective rate of interest. Okay? It is simply 1 times 1 plus I. Okay? Isang taon lang to. Right? So, we have two different interest rates here. We have the nominal rate of interest rate, I upper 3, and the annual effective interest rate. If these two given interest rates okay, produce the same accumulated value, we say that these two interest rates are equivalent. Okay? So, we have this. Okay, ito yung accumulated value ng one unit using the annual effective rate of interest. Tapos on the other side, ito naman yung accumulated value ni one unit using the nominal rate of interest convertible three times a year. Okay, so we have that one. I-generalize lang natin yan sa next slide. Here, okay, your 1 plus i is equal to 1 plus I upper M over M raised to M. Okay? Equal sila. Okay? You may want to draw a time diagram to prove that they are equal. Okay? So you say I and I upper M are equivalent rates. Okay? Now, since we were able to relate I upper M to I, we can easily relate I upper M to our discount factor V and to our effective rate of discount. Okay? Ganito yun. I'll switch ko lang sila ng position. Okay? 1 plus I is equal to V to the negative 1. Right? Here. And we also know that V is equal to 1 minus D. So that's why we have this. Okay? Please know this relationship by heart because we're going to use this most of the time. Okay?
let's have some examples here. Okay, first example. Here, how much should you invest today to have 7,500 after seven years? If you're given a nominal rate of interest of 6% payable monthly. Okay, so seeing out what is our notation here for the nominal rate of interest payable monthly? It is I upper 12. Okay, yeah? Right. Okay, so let me show you the time diagram. So, ganyan siya. We have 7,500 at T equals 7. Okay? So, magkano ang kailangan natin i-invest para magkaroon ng 7,500 after 7 years? Okay? Given I upper 12. Okay. So, ganito yung purpose ng example na ito. Huwag niyo munang pilitin, gamitin ang I upper 12. Balik kayo dun sa basic. Okay? You always go back to basics. Okay? So, paano ba kumuha ng present value? Okay? What are we going to multiply to this amount? We multiply 7,500 by the discount factor V. Okay? ba? So, we have this one. Right? 7,500 V raised to 7. Kasi 7 years yung dadaanan niya. Okay? Tapos, isip kayo, anong other measure of interest na madaling i-relate kay V? It's I, right? Because we know that V is equal to 1 plus I raised to negative 1. So, that's why we have this. So, you see it? Hindi ko agad ginamit ang I upper 12. Okay? So, and then finally, since we can easily relate I to I upper 12, yeah? Okay? Yun na yung sunod. Okay? Etong negative 1 times 7, i-multiply ko lang naman sila. Okay? So, an equal ang 1 plus i, it is equal to 1 plus i upper 12 divided by 12 and then quantity raised to 12. So, we have this. You see it? I replace 1 plus i by this expression. Kasama yung 12 dito. Okay? You substitute 6% to I upper 12 here, and then divided by 12, and then you do the math, you use your calculator, and then round off your final answer to at least four decimal places, and you're going to have this. Okay? So, you have 4,933.0109. So, anong ibig sabihin ng problem na ito? Kailangan mo mag-invest ng ganitong amount, approximately 4,900, so that after seven years, mag-grow na siya to 7,500. Of course, given this interest rate, 6% convertible or payable monthly. All right? Okay, let's have another example. This time, we get the accumulated value. Okay? And here we have um, different interest rates. Okay, so here's the time diagram for that problem. Okay, so 150 is invested at time zero. Okay, and ito ay invest for nine years. Okay, for the first four years, the rate of interest is 7% compounded semi-annually. So that's why we have I upper 2 equals 7%. Okay, and then for the last five years of the investment period, the interest rate is I upper 4 equals 5%. Okay? So, let's now get the accumulated value. Okay? So, tingnan nyo, 150. Let's carry this 150 dito muna sa time 4. Okay? Now, the given is I upper 2. Okay? When I divide this by 2, that becomes the effective rate of interest every 6-month period. Or that will be the effective rate of interest semi-annually. Okay? So again, you recall the accumulation function. It is 1 plus i raised to t. Your i there is the effective rate of interest per period. 
And then what's your T? T is the number of periods invested yung um, initial investment niyo. Okay? So, gagamitin natin yon. So, we have 150 times the accumulation function. Okay? So, we have 150 times 1 plus, oh, what is the effective rate of interest here? I upper 2 divided by 2. Right? Okay. Raise to, bilangin niyo from time 0 to time 4 kung ilang 6-month periods meron. Ilang semi-annual meron sa apat na taon. ba 8? Yeah, it's 4 times 2. Okay? So, that's why we have this. Okay? It's 1 plus the effective rate of interest per period raised to the number of periods invested yung 150. Okay? So, now, we are at time 4. Okay? Iki-carry naman natin yung amount na to dito sa time 9. Okay? But this time, we're going to use I upper 4. Okay? So, again, gagamitin ulit natin yung accumulation function. Okay, starting here, ha, sa time 4. Ano yung amount natin sa time 4? Ito, 150 times 1 plus I upper 2 over 2 raised to 8. Yan yung amount natin sa time 4. We're going to carry that amount to time 9. Okay, so we have, or we multiply this amount here by 1 plus... Okay, what is the effective rate of interest per quarter? Okay, I upper 4 over 4. Okay, and then raise to how many quarters are there from time 4 to time 9? Okay, they are in years. Okay, so we have 5 years here. Okay, in 5 years, we have 20 quarters. So that's why we have this. Okay, we have 1 plus, this is the effective rate of interest per quarter raised to how many quarters meron sa limang taon? 20. Okay, and then ipa-plug in nyo lang yung given na values. For I upper 2, you have 7%. So gagawin nyo lang itong 0 0.07. Ito naman, gagawin yung 0 0.05. And then you use your calculator, round your final answer to at least 4 decimal places, you're going to have this. So, this is the amount of money that you are going to get at time 9. Okay? If you invest 150 at time 0. And of course, given these interest rates. Okay? So, I think that's it. I hope you learned something from this video. See you in my next video.